Hey, welcome back. 641. It is May 2nd, but in two days, it will be Star Wars Day. Mm -hmm. We're getting you prepared with what to watch. So, Mark, may the fourth be with you is I something you that you're very excited about this weekend. Yeah, and this geekdom goes deep with me for a long time. I have been strong with all things the force. Uh, it's may the fourth be with you on Saturday, but I got stuff going on tomorrow. I busted out the tie, and even the guy at a and PM said, dude, you're early. Well, yeah, why not celebrate the way we celebrate Christmas a little bit early and get us ready for it? Right now, what to watch? Some movies that even if you're not a Star Wars fan, I think you're going to like. Why don't we kick it off with Solo? All right, do you ever wonder how Han Solo became Han Solo? This is the origin story of that. How he met Chewbacca, you'll get to know that too. But more importantly, Landa Harrison, one of the best Star Wars performances ever. Childish Gambino himself, Donald Glover brought it. I knew for a fact his dad was a huge fan of the Star Wars franchise and talked to him about that. Listen. Pops, he was the first person you called when you got the gig, right? Yeah. What did he say? How'd that go to? He was just kind of speechless. He couldn't believe it. It was just, you know, I had to tell him. Just because, like, he was the one that introduced me, and, like, Lando wasn't the first right. toy I ever had. So I, I just, he was kind of speechless. He was like, he's like, this is incredible. Like, how are they even going to, I think it was just like, he was like, how are they even going to do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, how they did it was incredible. The woman next to him is the voice and brains of the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, but I'm going to plot spoil if I go into that. So let's talk about something else. Imagine while Luke Skywalker was on this planet and that whole Star Wars story was taking place, we turn the camera to a planet over here. That is Rogue One. It's a separate Star Wars movie. Uh, it's not going to have Wookiees and all the things that you're used to with Star Wars, but it does have some great Easter eggs and one of the best performances also by Diego Luna. We talked about getting called up to the table. Look. All right, Thank so like, I know you're a big time director, big time producer and actor, but you still gotta be geeked out when you get the call that you're gonna be part of the Star Wars. Oh yeah, it was, I, I turned six years old again and just started jumping and, and celebrating and laughing and crying and I couldn't believe it, you know? I, I didn't do anything for this, not that I know at least. Right. They say no one can know, you know, this is, this is something that, that can't be leaked. So till we announce it, uh, please don't tell anyone. And you were like, what? How am I not gonna tell my friends and family that my life is about to change, you know? That I'm gonna be part of something I love? Right. That would be a secret hard to hold on to. Same with Daisy Ridley. I got a chance to catch up with her. Now say what you will about Star Wars 9 and 8, the last two movies, but the one that kicked those off, Episode 7, introduced us to one of the best Star Wars characters ever, and that would be Rey, one of the strongest female characters in the Star Wars franchise. My daughter, who long has called me a nerd, actually started to like Star Wars just because of this. And I talked to Daisy Ridley, not about the cost of fame, but the perks of fame. Look. The price of fame is that you can't go anywhere, and of course now being a part of this for the rest of your life, you won't be able to go anywhere in the free world without someone knowing who you are. What's the most recent time that's worked to your advantage, though? What has been great, I can't lie, is the last time I was in LA with my mother, um, we got free things. We got free coffees, we got free juices, and we got free ice cream, and I thought, this is a perk. I, I love when celebrities get perk because she got free coffee, free ice cream, free juices, and she also got $20 million for the last movie she made. I don't think she needs anything free. Regardless, uh, she is amazing. Daisy, thank you so much for bringing Ray to life. Why am I so geeked out about this? The first movie changed me forever. Let's go in our time machine way back to 1977, three weeks and a day after the first movie came out and the great-great-grandfather of the Walt Gray type. Take right. a look. No. Here's his Two Country People report. Mark Stell is a 12-year-old 7th grader from Nimitz Junior High School. One look inside his room tells you in a moment that he lives and breathes the Star Wars cult. Uh, I just liked the movie a lot. I thought the technical effects in it were real good. Oh my gosh. I'm yeah. looking at my, my hair looked like the new NFL helmets. Oh, wow. Like no, you're so handsome. cute, Mark. Handsome yeah. young man, uh, giving away your uh, your government name, by the way, too. <laughs> you're too kind. Uh -huh. So, but that was a local uh, station in Texas where you were raised, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and I like I knew this movie was coming. They did a promotion uh, where they sent out a Wookiee to like different gas stations in mm -hmm. Texas markets to pump gas. And we're like, what is that? I got to see that. I did the deep research on it and knew I loved it before it came oh. out and started gobbling up all the merch. You still got some of that merch that's on the walls? I still have some merch in the attic. That's how my third kid's going to college. <laughs> oh, all right. okay. It well, did look like it was lucrative. Yeah, That's where his yeah, career began. We just showed it to you right there in a small town in I Texas. just like the movie a lot. I'm leaving. <laughs> All right. <laughs>